Hey everyone, CPO here, and I've got a new projector screen on the way. FedEx shows it's out for delivery today. And so this wall is where I'm gonna hang that screen. I wasn't really sure exactly what I needed to do to achieve this. I tried to look at a bunch of YouTube videos on screen installations to figure out like what kind of bracketry is involved. I couldn't find anything on it, so I thought I would do this video just to show you my process. This is a nothing projector screen. I chose this because of the unbelievable price point. Got a small Black Friday deal on it, and yeah, it took, I ordered it on, I think Thanksgiving, maybe the day before Thanksgiving, and here it is Cyber Monday, and it's out for delivery. So uh, shipping was free as well, which was also a bonus. Anyway, uh, so what I'm gonna do is hang it on this wall. I already have my projector here. This is an Epson LS800, and I've been projecting it onto the blank wall just to get a sense of whether or not the size that we wanted was what we expected. Uh, we're going with a 100-inch uh, display. The other thing is, I because I have it sort of set up, it gives me a good idea of where I'm gonna put the screen so I can do some pre-work before the screen actually shows up. So that's what I'm doing now. We previously had a home entertainment system up here with big like tower console storage. And so that's why everything is sort of already where it is. So we basically are just filling that hole with a new projector and screen. So uh, with that said, what I wanna do in advance is start marking off with tape where I think I want to mount the frame for the new projector screen. So let's do that. It's great because we already have our projector on the stand that it's gonna be on. I already know like how far away it's gonna be from the wall. I already know how high it is off the projector. So I'll take some tape and mark the top of this uh, so I know where I'm trying to target when I build the display. Hey Google, turn off the TV. All right, and so now I can see where I'm gonna target. All right, so I use the stud finder to find the studs, and then I'm using these little rare earth magnets to actually find where the drywall screws are in the studs, and that helps me pinpoint exactly where the studs are, and also make sure I'm not gonna screw in on top. Now I'm ready to go ahead and start doing this installation. So as I pull this out of the box, I am gonna show you the user's manual because I think it's helpful to see what's involved and what you can expect. That's kind of what I was looking for, but couldn't find. So if you see something in here, just pause the video and uh, and take a look at it if you want to dig into it more. I'll also show you all of the things that come in the kit. So you've got two pairs of gloves, drill templates, which are basically measuring tapes. You've got the M4 by eight screws. There's a couple of spare screws in here. There's a hook puller, which is super useful. There are corner protectors, which are the last thing that are gonna go on the frame when you're done assembling it. Here are wall anchors with screws, which I didn't use because I drilled straight into the studs. There's also a little level in there, which I also didn't use. There's a couple of screwdrivers. I did use those. Here are the springs that are gonna attach the screen to the frame. And there's a bunch of extra ones in there for you as well. Here are the lower wall mounts. These are spring loaded. The way it works is you attach to the bottom and lift up and then it hooks on these, which are the top mounts. And this will make more sense here in a minute whenever we get the install going. Here are the fiberglass rods that go into the outside channel of the screen. And then you've got all these different frame pieces. It's really easy to assemble. Uh, so yeah, let's just get to that next. So you're gonna attach the long end of the pieces together. It's pretty easy. They only go in one way, and then you just tighten the screws and lock them in. Once I get the two long ones built, uh, then I can start adding in the smaller side pieces. Those just go in with this 90 degree adapter. Now I did end up sort of adjusting these to try and get this square. I didn't feel like it was sitting super square at first, so I found if I loosen up all four of these screws on the corner, I can square it up a little bit better. So that's what I did. I don't know if I had to do that or not, but it just made me feel better. After you get all the corners put together, there is the center brace that just goes in with these four screws. And there you go, that is the frame itself assembled. 
and ready to go. And you can see how it's gonna rest on this top plate that uh, attaches to the drywall. This is sort of backwards, but what I'm doing here is measuring how far down from the top line of the projector screen I'm gonna to wanna to put that mount. So like I said, I didn't really use the template they have, which is basically a measuring tape with a couple of marks from a Sharpie or something. But what I did do is have a top line of where I think I want the screen to go, and then I mounted those accordingly, hung the frame just for a test fit, and uh, turned on the projector. You can see, look, I'm a little bit high, and so that's just my fault because I wasn't really sure exactly what size I had. I knew it was pretty close, um, but I just measured how far to lower it, and then I lowered it by that amount, and then now I don't need the tape anymore. I know where the studs are. I know where I'm gonna mount them. I just wanna make sure that that top rail is level. And then once I do that, lock it into place, rehang it, recheck it, and uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So I can make some quick adjustments here by moving the table and the projector. Uh, next, I wanna do the lower mounts, and I'm compressing them an equal amount so that uh, they're both equally compressed, and I'm just pushing it down like an inch or so and then mounting them, making sure they're level with the top brackets. And there we go, that's all four mounted. And you'll see how this lifts up and off. It's the same way you put it on. You put it from the bottom, lift up, and then snap it on. Here's another look at those spring-loaded bottom brackets. You're gonna basically capture it in there and then push up, and that puts pressure on the screen. All right, so now we've got the actual screen material here. Be very careful with this. It's very easy to crease, damage, mess up. Just be super careful. Anytime you're touching it, make sure you wear the gloves and uh, make sure when you lay the frame on this that you don't have any wrinkles or anything that's going to uh, cause a crease. So just be super careful. And yeah, once we get this laid down, there's the fiberglass rods. It was kind of backwards. It said that there were four short ones and two long ones. There was actually four long ones and two short ones. On the long end, the top and bottom of the screen gets a short and a long, and then the sides are longs. So that's how that works. And then in the instruction manual, it shows you which order to clip the springs on, and then use that little spring puller, which like I said, is super handy. It just hooks in and you pull it down. And there's two levels uh, of adjustment, I guess I'll say. I'm using the closest point for clipping in. It's basically just a little rail you can see here that I just clip into. Um, there's another one that's a little bit further, I guess, if, if you need to go further to get wrinkles out or whatever. So I didn't feel like I needed that. The hardest one, really, or the, the hardest are the corners because you're you're sort of putting tension, like on that very first one you saw, before anything else is captured. So it sort of moves and shifts the whole frame. Once you get the opposite corner done, it starts to level out. Um, and then all four corners get done, and then it really, uh, really starts to come together. And then you can work on the sides. And like I said, in the manual, it shows you the order of that you want to do it. And you're clipping the springs around that fiberglass rod, so don't miss that when you... Uh, put your spring in. It's going to go around that white rod you can see there. So yeah, now that I've got the corners done, I can just go to town doing the sides and the top and the bottom. And it was pretty easy. Just take your time. I will say you can overstretch these springs. So if you feel like you want to move the uh, the projector screen material, by pulling it with the spring, you're not gonna be able to do that. The spring's just gonna stretch. So the good news is they give you a bunch of extra springs. So, you know, if you happen to overstretch one, it's not that big of a deal. Just grab another one. So this probably took the longest part, is just going around and uh, using the springs. These are all the leftover springs I had. And there you go, it's all nice and taut and looks really good. Now that I'm gonna start handling it, I'm gonna put the gloves on. I'm gonna take a look at the front and uh, super cool. You can see how it blacks out at certain angles and then goes gray. That's because of that ambient light rejection system that they have. It's super cool, but it makes it look really neat too. Now you've got these outside perimeter frames. There is one that has the logo on it for nothing projector. That's gonna be on the bottom 
in the middle. So make sure you place these in a way that puts that in the right position. Uh, there are a few screws holding all these together. I know people have complained that some of these were tight and hard to do. Uh, I didn't have that problem, but I also didn't tighten them all down until I got them all into place. And so I think that that's the trick is don't tighten them down. You've got a little bit of room to wiggle them back and forth and get everything aligned. So, you know, get it all aligned and in place before you tighten them down. So that worked for me. Hopefully that tip helps somebody else. And then you've got these corner pieces that just uh, capture the corners and conceal that gap there on the corner. So don't worry if you have a gap like this one here because that corner piece will cover that up. And there we go, that is the completed screen. It's beautiful. Uh, this is the back. Uh, these are the leftover screws I have, by the way. Uh, in addition to the leftover kit, I also had those leftover. Uh, gloves on, and then basically what we're going to do is just lift this up, get it up underneath the bottom, and then once you have it clipped underneath the bottom, you can then lift the entire screen and then clip it over the top. And then once you do that, you've got room to slide that left and right. So uh, I got it centered after we hung it. Uh, you don't have to stress too much because you know it, it kind of can slide back and forth. Then I got the projector lined up pretty darn near close uh, just right off the bat, but I do still need to do the installation procedure. And with this particular projector, you can do it manually or you can do it with an app. Uh, I've done it both ways. Uh, the app is kind of cool, so I'm gonna show you here. This is, again, the Epson app. And basically what you do is you take a picture and then it does some magic and yeah, it automatically aligns it to your screen. So this is what it looks like when it's off. I am in a well-lit room. There are a whole lot of windows behind me that normally put a huge glare on the TV. As a matter of fact, before I show you what the projector screen looks like, this is what I'm used to watching because of those windows behind me. It's the same time of day right now as I took this video, but check this out. This is with the Nothing Projector ALR Black Series screen and my Epson projector. It's amazing. There is no glare from the windows whatsoever. You can see glare in the pictures on the left and right, but the projector screen is glare free, but yet it's bright. There's plenty of contrast. Uh, it's got good whites, good blacks. This is a very bright room. I got this as a TV, not as a movie room. I have another projector in a movie room and it's a dark room. I needed something that could handle daylight and this did it for me. So anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.